Time travelers abound in fiction. I've read at least 20 novels or short stories about time travel and seen countless movies and TV shows. Usually someone goes back in time. Perhaps the future being unknown is too scary. The interesting choice concerns when. To what time do they want to go back? And all of those plots with which I am familiar, strangely, no one wants to go back to antiquity and walk around with Jesus. But I do, and I know exactly the time to which I would travel after I brushed up on my Aramaic. Everybody was questioning what was going on. They had traveled a long ways out in the wilderness to find out. Someone gave them scary words about a winnowing fork and unquenchable fire. After many others, one man was pushed under the water. But then they all heard a voice, a great voice from heaven. How tremendously exciting that must have been. Everybody would have been abuzz about who the man was, the one who went under the water, and who had a dove land upon him. The voice said, You are my son, the beloved, in you I am well pleased. Why at this moment? I believe that it is a pivot point in the history of our species. One of us was identified as the son and beloved, in whom the one in heaven is well pleased. I want to see more of that. I want to witness what being beloved of the Creator looks like. Did he smile? Did he look terrified? Or did he look like a child who has received the approval of his father? We know what happened next. He went into a more remote place for 40 days and was tempted by Satan. I don't need to see that. Just his face. What does the beloved look like? We talk a lot about the good news and we describe it in different ways, but this is one way. Beloved looks like us. Beloved looks like us. How is that? Jesus, representing all of Israel, received John's baptism for the forgiveness of sins. But St. Paul in our prayer book are clear that we are baptized into Christ. We are baptized into the Beloved One of God Almighty. Even if we don't feel it, well, maybe we don't believe it. Maybe we're stuck in despair. I get stuck in verse 6 of Psalm 22, which we always recite on Good Friday. I am a worm and no man. When that wormy feeling comes on, we can say to ourselves, I am baptized into the Beloved. Or maybe we're in verse 11. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Add this, but I am baptized into the Beloved. Or verse 14. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. And yet, I am baptized into the Beloved. The point of Psalm 22 is that Jesus fulfilled it on Good Friday. His baptism put him on a trajectory to crucifixion, at which time he began reciting this psalm from the cross and others around him acted it out like a screenplay. That, too, is what Beloved looks like. I don't want to look on his crucifixion either, but I would see that face, the Beloved One, with a broken and slowly dying body. Someday, maybe, I'll need to look, and I'll know that I am baptized into the Beloved, the Resurrected One. And maybe, just maybe, when people who don't know anything about his good news look upon us, they too will see the Beloved. We can show that face to a world that is filled with despair. 
We're baptized into his death and resurrection too. St. Paul said that we are baptized into his death, so the law has no hold over us. And we are baptized into his resurrection, so death has no hold over us. Shouldn't that dispel all of our fear, all of our hesitation? Don't we have the confidence to run headlong and carefree into whatever ministry Jesus gives us to do? My brothers and sisters, the beloved ones, we can accomplish anything as we travel into the future one day at a time. Amen. Amen.